RF man here. Uh, today I want to talk about attenuators. You've probably heard me say many times for the LD MOS amplifiers, you only really require one to one and a half watts of drive depending on if it's a single version or a dual version. And in most cases, if you have a standard CB radio, you're going to have four watts of output. If it's been tuned up or peaked, maybe it's five or six watts. So regardless of the radio you're using, you're going to have to do something to attenuate the signals. So I'm going to start out first by talking about inline attenuators. This is an inline attenuator here. This is a, a three watt 50 ohm. So we'll demonstrate how that works. And then we're going to talk about attenuator pads. And then we'll actually design and build an attenuator out of power resistors uh, and show you how to do some of the calculations and what that's all about. So first thing I want to do here is just show that when we talk about inline attenuators, okay, there are many, many different types available. Okay, anywhere from 1 dB up and anywhere from 2 watts to literally hundreds of watts. So there are many available that can be purchased online, uh, depending on your application, your radio, your amplifier, etc. So before I go any further, I just want to show an example. And a lot of you who watched my other videos heard me say this more than once. Um, we're talking about, when, when we talk about decibels, it can either be gain or loss, okay? So in this case, when we talk about attenuators, we're talking about power loss. So the decibel level is expressed as a negative value. And you can see there I have minus 3 dB, 10 dB, 20 dB, 30 dB. These are all common values, right? So remember my other videos, Minus 10 dB is 10 times lower, minus 20 dB is 100 times lower, minus 30 dB is 1,000 times lower. And the easiest way to equate this is by using a multiplying factor. So if it's 10 times lower for minus 10 dB, it's 0.1 as a multiplying factor, minus 20 dB is 0.01, minus 30 dB is 0.001. It's a logarithmic scale, so we're basically just shifting zeros. So here's my first example, example one. Okay, a lot of uh, high-powered ham radios are about 100 watts or so. Um, so if I had 100 watts and I use an inline attenuator, which is minus 10 dB, then I have 100 watts times 0.1 or 10 watts on the output. Okay, so that's just a very simple calculation. Um, example two is shown in a block diagram. I got 100 watts, this time I'm using minus 20 dB, okay, so 100 times 0 .001 is going to be 1 watt, and that would be suitable to drive an LD MOS amplifier. Uh, we'll talk about the other examples later on in the video. Example 3 I'll be using to demonstrate the attenuator pad, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So here I have my striker radio set up and basically I'll be using uh, the output set at 3 watts since that's the maximum rating of this attenuator okay so this striker radio has a variable power output and I'm using the lower scale here so we're on 5 watts Okay, that's the lower scale here. This is 1 watt, 2 watts, 3 watts, etc. All right, so we'll key it up without modulating. And you can see I got a power output of 3 watts. I'm using a 10 watt dummy load connected up to the power meter. And uh, basically, it shows 3 watts average power RMS power. So now we'll go ahead and we'll connect the inline attenuator and we'll see the results. All right, so now we have the inline attenuator hooked up to the radio. And now we'll go ahead and key.
key up the mic, see what we get. Remember we're on five watt scale, so it's the lower scale there. Um, the first increment is 0.5 watts, then one watt, two watt, etc. So we'll kind of zoom in a little bit there. And you see we're right about four watt, 0.4 watts rather, 400 milliwatts. So if we basically take three watts and then times, as we said, 10 dB multiplying factor 0.1, so 3 watts times 0.1, about 300 milliwatts. You can see there I got about 400 milliwatts. So, so reasonably close to what we expected the value to be. And very little change to the SWRs. Uh, these type of inline attenuators, They basically already tune to 50 ohms impedance, and they again come in a variety of different wattage ratings. All right, so next we'll demonstrate the attenuator pad, talk a little bit about how that's used. All right, so we're going to continue our discussion on attenuator pads. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I'll put this pen in view so you can see the scale there. This is an attenuator pad. These are rated for 20 watts. There are a variety of different types with flanges, without flanges. So you can mount these particular type to a heat sink. So that, that's a 20 watt. Okay, if we take a look at the specifications here. Okay, you can see there's a 10 watt version. There's a 20 watt version, 100 watt version, etc. Uh, they go into the hundreds of watts, and they have, as I said, a mounting flange either with one hole or two holes, so you can mount it to a heat sink so you don't exceed the maximum operating temperature. So, what we're going to do for this demonstration is we're going to use a 20 watt, okay, and we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that. Uh, before I actually get into some of the measurements, I'm going to try to zoom in. There you can see the specifications for this. So the input and output impedance is 50 ohms, as you can see there. The frequency range is quite wide, DC to 4 gigahertz. Okay, attenuator values are available in this particular type from 0 to 10 dB. And you can see that from 0 to 2 gigahertz on the bottom there, the SWR is about 1.15 to 1. So you should get a reasonable match using these type of attenuator pads. Uh, these are actually from EMC Technologies. They are now called Smith Interconnection if you want to go ahead and Google them. They changed their name. So here's the output we're going to use. Um, as I said, most CB radios that uh, have been peaked or tuned up are probably around 6 watts. Okay, so I'm going to use that as an example. Okay, so if we have 6 watts and we have minus 6 dB, I'm going to go over to this chart here and show that for each decibel level, and this just has some common values, it shows what the multiplying factor is. So for minus 3 dB, which is usually our half power point. We say 0 0.707, you multiply by 0 0.5, minus 6 dB, 0 0.25, and then there's 10 dB, 12 dB, 20 dB. Um, you should recognize the 10 dB with a 0.1 multiplying factor and the 20 dB with a 0.01. So for minus 6 dB, we're gonna use 0.25. Now let me shift over to the other side of the table Okay, this shows gain, right? This side with the negative values shows loss. This side with the positive values show gain. So you're gonna see a correlation here. 3 dB, okay, is two times as high, right? And minus 3 dB is half, okay? And we go along here and we see 6 dB is four times, minus 6 dB is one quarter, or 0.25. So you can see the relationship there. So let's go back up to our example. Okay, the striker is set to six watts. I got a minus six dB attenuator. So
So I take 6 watts times 0.25, I get 1.5 watts. Now that would be perfect to drive a dual LD MOS amplifier. So if you got a 6 watt CB, you want to put the maximum input power, then minus 6 dB will do the job. Now you can also work this the other way. If you need 1.5 watts, as I'm showing here, if you need 1.5 watts here, and you got a 6 watt output here, 1.5 divided by 6 is 0.25. And yes, it's that simple. That gives you the multiplying factor. Now you can find these charts practically anywhere. We'll go ahead and show you some online calculators as well. So we're gonna swing over here back to the to the striker. Okay, we're gonna key it up and let this focus for a minute. Okay, we're gonna key it up. And now I'm on the 50 volt. 50 watt rather so that would be this scale here and here's 5 watts so we'll be a little over 5 watts when we key it up and there you can see we're about 6 watts okay so now this is what the attenuator looks like uh, I went ahead and took the CDB 6 dB attenuator Mounted it on a heat sink. I got two SO239 connectors, okay, with a fairly large heat sink. So we could safely go up to 20 watts with this, but we're going to just test it at 6 watts. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in line, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the output. All right, so now we have the inline attenuator installed. Okay, we got the output of the striker radio going into the input of the attenuator and then the output of the attenuator going to the watt meter so remember we are on 6 watts and it's minus 6 dB which is a multiplying factor of 0.25 so 6 watts times 0.25 is 1.5 watts now you'll notice here that I've changed the scale to 50 watts since since uh, from 50 watts rather to 5 watts okay so we we could see a little clearer what the attenuation is so let me try to zoom in on this and we see here a 5 watt scale so this is 1 watt 1 and a half watts 2 watts etc so let's go ahead and key up the mic without modulating And you can see that we're right about 1.5 watts or so. So that gives us the proper attenuation. Now there's also a number of websites that have these decibel calculators. Let me zoom in on the URL for this one so you can see. Okay. And this does power and voltage. So I have power selected. So Let's go ahead and use our actual example here, okay, and you can calculate this a number of different ways, but we said our input is 6 watts there, and we're using a uh, minus 6 dB attenuator pad, so we could calculate our output, and you can see it's 1.507, call it 1.5, or you can also use this calculator. We'll go ahead and delete these two fields. And you can say, okay, my input is 6 watts. My output requirement, what did we say? It was 1.5 watts. So what's the dB level? And you can see minus 602. Call it minus 6 dB. So there's a number of these calculators available. It's a very simple calculation. This one's kind of nice. Okay, you can put in your input power, of your, which would be actually the input to the attenuator, so it's the output of your radio. Okay, and then you can say, okay, this is how many watts I need to drive my amplifier, and it will tell you the decibel level. So, so very easy to use this type of a calculator, and there are many available online. So... I hope this helps. The next topic 
we're going to discuss 